Hey everyone, this is Gleb Bakhmutov and today I want to show a couple of examples of sanity assertions that I add to my test just to catch edge cases that might accidentally lead to the wrong test result. We're going to look at comparing two numbers that are static, how to handle not a number if it's in the elements text, and then more realistically we're going to load the numbers dynamically so they'll appear after some delay and what the test has to handle. Finally, I will look at how negative assertions could lead you to passing the text accidentally and not correctly. And finally, after that, I'll show how all the tests, no matter what you do, become much, much simpler if you know the data that you expect to see on the page. So let's start with the first example. I have two input or two elements that show two numbers received amount $19.80 and the spent amount and they should be the same. So we can get the received invoke jQuery text, we get a text, we can convert it to a number and we can even use a sanity assertion should be a number and you will see one more benefit in a second and then we get received amount and we can use site contains to immediately say we spend the same amount. Perfect. Got the received element, got its text. And then this is why I add an assertion, like should be a number, because then I can see it right in command log. Then we pass it to the callback, because anytime you get something from the app, you need to use sci then to pass it forward. And we contain um, 1980. Perfect. If the data is static, this test works very well. Now, before we move on, let's look at the edge case. So I'm going to remove this test and I'm going to move to the handle, not a number case. The HTML here is almost the same, but let's put instead of a number, let's put dash dash and then none. So something messed up on our backend rendering, so our page shows, you know, invalid values. You know, we can try doing this, right? and uh, hoping that it works. And notice that right now it fails because site contains does not allow a number, which is not a number. So we'll convert it to a string. And now it passes, but notice it actually passed accidentally. Yes, we grabbed the element, it gave us dash dash, which when you convert a number gives you not a number. Our sanity assertion actually passed. Right? Because not a number in JavaScript is a type of a number. It's just not what we expect. So our sanity assertion right here is probably with way too broad. So we can say and not be a none. So now we'll catch it and the test will correctly fail. And if you do this, then I probably would switch to even more stri or stricter assertion, right? should be within and then I can specify kind of sanity limits like between zero and a thousand because then on, the number cannot be a million. A good thing about assertions like greater than, within, they reject not a number value. So with a single assertion I can catch all those edge cases and you know we'll catch something even if it's a number right the zero doesn't match none. Great, so we're done with this example and let me move to the more complicated and realistic test. Imagine the data is dynamic. Um, so right here, I'm just loading each number after one second. And initially I show two dashes. How can we confirm it? in this situation. Notice it loads after one second and after two seconds. Well, if we use kind of the same logic as before, we could probably get something working right here, right? Notice, uh, actually it did not do anything. Ah, because I'm skipping. Okay, let's, let's do this. Okay, so not a number immediately failed. So why didn't it wait for the number to load? Because we use then. 
outside and kind of breaks the chain and says whatever the subject I have, I convert it to a number, you know, by running it for callback and that's it. This is the final thing. Uh, if the assertion following doesn't pass, it fails, not my problem. It's a single shot operation. So we cannot really do this, right? So you could be saying, okay, well, just use should callback right here. And the should retry, so you'd think it would go back to say get and get the element again. But no, you cannot use other Cypress commands inside the should callback. Should callback should be a synchronous function that just checks something and immediately throws an error and lets it retry. And if we use then like before, well, unfortunately, it doesn't do much. Uh, notice that it actually passed accidentally because both elements had dash dash. Okay. We can fail by saying expect received by adding a sanity assertion to be within. And it will say, okay, I, it's not a number, right? Or they, so we can convert it. Okay. And it fails, catches this, but how do we actually retry? Okay. I'm going to skip this and I'm going to write the test the way I would write it. Basically we have kind of two operations here or two phases to the test. If we run it, notice first phase is to make sure that both numbers appear, or at least the first one appears, then convert it to a number. So wait for it to load, convert to a number and compare it to the second element. So we can get the received. It's a query. It will retry. Invoke text. It's a query. It will retry. And then we can use an assertion should match and we can give a regular expressions to match the text. So we have one or two digits followed by a dot and two numbers for the sense. So in this case, notice it retries, retries until we actually get 1980 inside the element. After we get this, well, now everything is safe. We can say then number because we only need to do it once and then received amount we can yeah why don't we add another assertion should be within right and at this point we will get the actual number okay and now we can use site contains spent received number we know it's a number and site contains will retry until it sees the number 1980 as well so now everything is happy. Okay, you might think that in this situation, a good idea is to check if the elements do not have text dash dash. Okay, so imagine we kind of write something like this. So let's run this test only. So right here, notice our assertion set should not have text dash dash and then expect or spent should not have text dash dash and it works right we see numbers you know we, it, it's good but imagine someone comes in and says okay well dash dash is weird why don't we put three dots to signal that this is loading and notice how the test passes immediately even before the numbers are shown because well we don't have dash dash right we have something else. Our negative assertion should not have text, text dash dash are pretty broad. The element might have lots of different values that we did not expect to see. It could have none, dash dash, zero, zero, like some weird initial input, which doesn't match dash dash. So we have to get away from using just one of the possible negative assertion values. And instead, I prefer to say positive, right? Assertion. I can say psi get received or even contains. And I can use the same um, regular expression. Because now, even if I use you know, dots, doesn't matter, right? It actually waited for the number to appear. And the same thing. Of a spent 
right? Keeps waiting, waiting for the number. Doesn't matter if we use dashes or loading image or anything there, right? It can only succeed if there is a number displayed. Okay, final example. All our tests were a little bit on the complicated side because we had to retry and, you know, get the numbers and, you know, some implementations were simpler than others. Like, I don't think that this is a bad test. But at the same time, I think if you know the data to expect, what you expect to see, everything becomes so much simpler. So in the last test, imagine that we do know the uh, amount shown on the page. Maybe we spy on data, maybe we look at the database, maybe we grab the amount from the uh, app itself. So this is the string we expect to find. So now all we have to do is to say the received element should have this amount and the spent has to have this amount and boom. Very succinct three line test that retries no matter if your application is loading the data slowly. Okay, so to summarize, if you are trying to compare two values on the page, you have to consider a couple of possibilities depending if they're static or loading dynamically. If you're comparing it as numbers, make sure it is a number and also use sanity assertion like within to guard against non edge case. Finally, if you know your data, using positive assertions is much more preferable than using negative assertions that might pass accidentally. The full source code that I've shown is on my Cypress example site. I will link it in the description of this video.